Hey guys, we're back in the sanctuary again today. Um, for those of you who go to Trinity and go to either the 7.30, the 11.30, or the um, 6 o'clock service, you're in here pretty re uh, pretty frequently. Um, for those of you who are watching from maybe Iowa, hi guys, or other places, um, you've never been inside our sanctuary um, to worship, but I would like to show you just kind of what it looks like. This is the perspective of our church from where our organist sits. That's where I've got my computer and, and so then my camera um, balanced on is, is on our organ. So we can see um, all of the pews, we can see the altar and the pulpit where our pastor stands and then also the cross that has the um, purple cloth draped over it right now. So kind of just a neat perspective to, to see out and see what our organist sees. For us though, we should probably jump into our Faithful Facts for Lent devotion. And today we're going to be learning about Jude Thaddeus. And we're still learning about the disciples, and this is the one that's normally listed 10th. We're going to read um, just a few excerpts from Mark 3, 14, and 18. It says, And he appointed 12 to be with him, and to be sent out to preach, Simon, whom he called Peter, and Thaddeus. In the Gospels of Mark and Matthew, this disciple is called Thaddeus, but in Luke and John, the name is Jude. The Greek for Jude is Judas, a common Jewish name for more than a dozen different people in the Bible. However, because Judas Iscariot tarnished the name, Matthew and Mark used Jude's nickname, Thaddeus, while John and Luke used the original name helpfully shortened to Jude by translators. John explains Jude's name. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? And that's in John 14, 22. Early church traditions have Jude preaching the gospel in various places, especially Syria and Asia Minor. He and Bartholomew became patron saints of the Armenian church. Why must we rely on tradition rather than historical fact concerning the apostles? The gospels were written on one scroll each, except for Mark, who should have used, who should have used a longer scroll. The 28 chapters in Matthew or in Acts were at the limit of the scroll capacity. Any more material would make the scroll too bulky and difficult to manage for the author as well as the reader. The evangelists limited their coverage to the major events in the life of Christ, although we wish we had many more details. Ain't that the truth? Okay, let's go ahead and pray. Thanks to you and your apostles, O oh Universal Savior, your good news was not limited to your band of disciples, but reaches into the entire world. We pray that it may speed on and triumph. In Jesus' living, dying, rising, and reigning name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Yeah, we learned some pretty interesting things here, things I want to look into some more. Um, for example, one of the things that isn't even the main topic is um, that they were written on one, one scroll each, and that so they, they kind of limited themselves in what all they wrote um, just based on how much it could hold. Now, of course, God's only going to let go in what he wants to have go in, and um, he's going to make sure that it all fits what he wants to fit on that. But now I'm curious how big were these scrolls? And and what was considered too much. And so as soon as I hit stop here, I'm going to do some looking up. Well, I'm also going to walk to my office. I don't have the resources right here. So anyway, I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.